the question is kind of how, you know, the, the, the example given was New York Times is, is going from a, sort of giving away their content for free to, to charging for it. And, you know, how are publishers going to stay in business, um, you know, if, if there's this expectation that everything's free? And, and I mean, you know, I don't think anyone's really nailed that. Um, and I don't, I don't think I have any answers to that, um, you know. <laughs> uh, it, it's because the value is really in, you know, the eye of the, of the consumer. And, um, and so, I mean, I guess continue to differentiate. I mean, I, I would still read the New York Times if, even if we're behind a paywall, but, you know. I think that's something that a lot of people, <laughs> I mean, if, if I solve that problem, you know, I, you know, whoever solves that problem is gonna make more money than God, so. <laughs> okay. I had a question. Um, you know, your product can be used anywhere in the world, so how do you think about uh, pricing when this can be used anywhere, and what are some of the stats in terms of U.S. usage versus international, and how you would price differently, you know, uh, a $10 product here is different from $10 in Asia or Africa yep. or somewhere else. So the question is, you know, how do we account for the, uh, you know, that $10 in the U.S. per month might be different or a, it's kind of a different ball game, some, you know, elsewhere. Um, so we have, our users are split up basically maybe 50% U.S., 50% non-U.S. Um, to date, we haven't done too much optimization on that, and I think, you know, there's just you know, a, a long bulleted list of things you do with, you know, accepting mobile payments or different things and it's kind of adapting to all the different, um, different areas uh, that, where you want to do business. But, um, you know, we see that, we, we sort of want to nail our core business model and, you know, I, I th think we've made some good strides there and that's just going to be a further optimization on, on everything we do. You talked a little bit about the fragility of uh, the freemium model, and one source of that could definitely be competition. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, um, how has competition affected your decisions about the mix of free and premium, and what kinds of challenges have you had, and how did you respond? <clears throat> um, so the question is, you know, how has comp competition affected our sort of product segmentation? So it affected it a lot in the very beginning. Um, so we knew we wanted to, I mean, it's, Ten dollars a month or a hundred dollars a year is, is is about where Mobile Me was. Um, you know, a number of our competitors were kind of plus or minus ten twenty percent on the on the ten dollars a month for uh, fifty gigs of storage. Um, so we looked pretty carefully at that, and and obviously you know we wanted. To, I think two gigs was kind of the going rate for for uh, free free storage. But you know, as as th that's one of the risks, right? Is if people. If someone comes out with you know ten gigs for free, that's you know something you have to account for down the road, and that's sort of one of the reasons why it, why it can be fragile. It's sort of a follow up on the same question sure. of thought. Did you model out the two gigs versus something lower than that to try and reduce the ratio of free to mium? Yeah, yeah. So the question is, do we model different things? Uh, and 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 the answer is well. Actually, what we did on this front was we started out very early in our private beta. We gave people 10 gigs and just, say, and just said, go nuts. Then we knocked it down to five, and then we knocked it down to two and kept it there. Uh, and we sort of measured the differences in utilization. Um, so we had a pretty good idea of what it would have cost at all the different points. We, you know, we didn't see a ton of advantage to giving away more space because then you know, there's a pretty big chunk of the histogram, of the, sort of, you know, the storage curve, where between, you know, two and five or two and ten gigs so you you leave a lot on the table so that's kind of the classic um that or that's an example of this kind of that classic problem with how do you segment this and and we basically just did a bunch of math so um and then we also did split tests on pricing in general um it was kind of frustrating to put like you know a man month of work into it and end up where we were before but <laughs> you know um all these things are really important to do a quick question on pricing so what kind of experiments did you do on pricing and did you have a range where you started on a low and then tried a different people on a high price? Yeah, so the question is do we do experiments on pricing um, or what kinds of split tests do we do? So basically, um, pretty basic. I mean, we're like, uh, you know, there's the free account and then we, uh, one bucket of people we just showed the $10 plan to, another bucket we showed like a 20 gig plan another for, I don't know, six, seven bucks a month. 10 gig plan for five bucks a month, 25 gig plan for like eight or nine bucks a month, just sort of seeing what the sensitivities were. And it ended up, you know, the optimal point was still closest to, to what we had before. Mm -hmm.